Hello and welcome. Here I'm going to show you how to make your pivot tables and pivot charts a bit more useful. So here we have a pivot chart connected to a pivot table and some slicers. And look at these lovely little buttons that are automatically going to give us the values for a last month, a last year, and this year. And notice that the chart updates. The scale also updates, so here we have months, and then if we go to last month, we have days, and also the slicers up here update. And if you know anything about working with slicers and timelines and pivot tables, you know that that is not always the case. So we have a few interesting things going on here, and what I'm going to show you is how to make these buttons and how to make them work and make them useful. And once you learn how to do that, you can go ahead and add your buttons for whatever time period you would like. Now make sure to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you can get all of my new tutorials. Now let's get this guy working. First, I'm going to show you how the workbook is set up now, and then what you need to add to it, and then we're going to do just a little bit of programming, but I'm going to walk you through it. So let's start over here at the raw data worksheet. This is your raw data. It's what you want to model. It's what you want to put in the chart and what you want to actually slice and dice. And what you do is you create a pivot table from this. So click in here and go to insert and pivot table. And I have renamed this table to table raw. That's why you see that there. And then we go over to the helper worksheet and we click a one and then we hit OK to insert the pivot table. I'm going to cancel that because I've already done it. Let's go now to the helper worksheet where we have the pivot table. So this guy is a regular pivot table. Let's get the field list back. And there is nothing weird going on here. For the columns, we have store name, value, sum of total, and rows. This is important to pay attention to. We will be referencing this very soon. We have year, month, and day of month. And these are helper columns, not date columns. Now the reason I use that instead of date columns is a separate issue, but just know that for pivot tables, helper columns are king. And you can see here in the raw data over here to the right, we have helper columns. But this date time column is a real date time that Excel understands as a date time. And we are going to be using that very soon. Now, before I get to this guy, let's go to the dashboard worksheet. So the point of this is to have all of the stuff we don't want the user to see right here, our pivot table. Now, you could have it all on one worksheet, but let's make it look nice. Here we have the pivot table, and then we have the dashboard over here. And all we have here are slicers that are connected to that pivot table and a pivot chart. And the way that you add those is you click in your pivot table, you go to pivot table analyze, and then you go to insert slicer. You choose the fields upon which you would like to slice and dice. We've done the helper columns here. So year, month, weekday, and day of month, I believe. And when you do that, you're going to get your slicers here and you just click them, cut them. So control X, then go over here and paste the guys in. So you have a nice little interface. Now, the last thing that you do is you go to Pivot Table Analyze and you insert a pivot chart. And then you cut it and paste it on the dashboard as well. Okay, so we're all caught up. And the next thing that you want to do is to add a timeline slicer. This is very important. This is where we're going to do all of our powerful date magic. And this must be attached to a real date time field. But the beautiful thing about this is that we do not have to also include that date time field in our pivot table. So here we only have our helper columns for year, month, and day. No date times. And we're going to keep this guy over here because it's ugly and very annoying to use and nobody likes the timeline little guy anyway. So we want to give the user some buttons. So we have our buttons here. These buttons are going to directly interact with the timeline. These slicers are completely separate and go just for the pivot table. They have nothing to do with these buttons here. So in fact, you don't even need these slicers in order to have these buttons. And that would also make your life easier because then you wouldn't have to worry about refreshing it when you change the timeline because the slicer is not going to update when you change the timeline. It's very annoying.
And this chart is a regular chart, but if you're in earlier versions of Excel, it might look a little bit different. You might not have the plus and minus buttons down here. All that does is it allows you to expand or collapse the detail for a selection. So if I hit the minus and we go back to the helper tab, notice everything is collapsed. And if I click the plus, everything will be expanded right now. Okay, so I think that you're all caught up. And I spent a lot of time on that because it's very important. The setup here determines everything else that we are about to do. And pivot tables can be a real pain. So these, oh, for these, these are just buttons. So go to Insert, Illustrations, Shapes, do a rounded rectangle, draw it, make it nice, put your text in it. Looks a lot nicer than the annoying form control buttons or active X buttons, in my opinion. So we have everything set up, but now we have to make the code for these buttons. So let us go to the VBA window, Alt F11. And we're going to make one macro for each one of these buttons. And I've got all the code here. Let me clear it out, and we're going to walk you through it. Don't be intimidated. It is a lot of code, but it's very easy to do. So we're dealing with slicer caches and pivot tables and fields. We're dealing with a lot of complex stuff, but to change it for your situation, it's not going to be that difficult. So first up, let's create a bunch of variables that we can use. One for the slicer cache. That's the thing that sits behind the slicer that you want to work with to control the slicer. And then let's go ahead and create something to make it easier to get our dates. So date period start as date and a date period end as date. And let's go for some pivot table variables, PT as pivot table. And let's go for the pivot fields for the year as pivot field. And one for the month, pivot field. Okay, we are done. Now let's go ahead and get some references for the slicer cache and the pivot table. There are so many interesting ways to get these references. Let's go with a simple one. So reference the workbook first, this workbook, and just go for the slicer caches in it. And now we need to get a name. What do we want to reference here? I'm going to try and explain this quickly, but in a helpful way. The slicer cache, as I mentioned a moment ago, is the thing that sits behind all of the slicers. These are slicers, but the timeline is also a slicer. And so we need to get the name of the slicer cache. Now, one really easy way to do that, if you have a bunch of slicers and timelines, is to go ahead and apply a filter. Then turn on the macro recorder and clear the filter. When you have a lot of slicers, this is so helpful. And let's stop the macro recording and go back to the VBA window, Alt F11, go to our new module, and look what we have here, the name for that guy. I've made other tutorials where I did this with 10 slicers, and it saves so much time, and it avoids spelling issues, because I can now copy that guy, go over here, and paste it right here. And we have our reference to the correct slicer cache, so we can work with the timeline. Now, how about we get a pivot table reference set PT equal to, remember it belongs to a worksheet, and we are on the helper worksheet for this pivot table, dot pivot tables, and the name of our pivot table is PT store sales. And if you don't know that, just click your pivot table, pivot table analyze, pivot table, and right there is the name. Give it a nice descriptive name so you can better understand what's going on in your code. And I'm going to come back to the fields a little bit later. Let's go ahead and get the next thing that we need. So we want to filter it by a date, so we need to get some dates. So let's go ahead and pop something into a date period start, control space to fill in that variable name. And we're going to use the great date serial function. We give it a year, a month, a day, and it's going to give us an actual date as a date that we can use as a date. And it works a lot like the functions in the worksheet. So we want to get the year. We can go year, open parentheses, and give it the current date. Here we want to get the date for last month. So we're going to go first for the current year, and then comma. We're going to use the month function to get the current month. 
but we don't want this month, we want last month. So we do minus one. Then a comma, which day do we want? Well, the first day of the month, which is a one. Close that up. And we're ready for date, period, end. And we're going to use date serial once again with the current year and the current month. And this time how we do it, it's kind of interesting. We go for the day and we put in a zero. And that will give you the last day of last month. Kind of an interesting little thing. And now we have everything that we need. So just a few lines of code, but a lot of potentially confusing setup. So uh, let us go ahead and just clear the date filter. Make sure everything is nice and fresh and ready to go. And all we do is we reference the slicer cache. That's what SC refers to now. And then we reference timeline state. And then we reference set filter date range. And we only have two arguments, a start and an end date. So a date period start and date period end. And that is actually all that you need to get it pretty much working. So let's check it out and go back to the dashboard. And this is the macro that's attached to the last month button. So just right click it, go to assign macro and attach the macro that we just made show last month. Click away and click it. There we go. But we do have a couple things that aren't going to work. So let's click the ones that work completely. All right, so now we're viewing months and we're viewing 2020 on the slicer and all of the months over here. And let's click last month. Our chart doesn't look so good. It is for October 2021 though. But look up here, 2020 is highlighted and all of the months are highlighted. <laughs> it's very annoying. Let's go ahead and fix it. Alt F11. To get the slicers to work, we must refresh the pivot cache that sits behind the pivot table that is attached to the slicers. Is it confusing? Yeah, kind of, but that's how pivot tables are. So slicer cache dot pivot tables. So we're going to access the pivot table attached to the slicer cache for our timeline. And let's just go for the first one. We don't need to get the name for this, but you could put the name in here if you wanted to. And pivot cache. Now that we have that reference, refresh that guy. And we go back here. Let's click last month once again. Notice 2020 and the months will then be updated correctly. 2021 and October. But we still have to deal with the chart and we do that using the pivot fields. So let's go ahead and add those guys now. I told you that we have a year and a month and that's what we deal with to get it to look nice. So let's get a reference to those guys first. Set PF year equal to our pivot table and then we want to get the pivot fields and then we want the name year and set PF month equal to the pivot table and then pivot fields and month. And remember, I told you earlier in the tutorial, it's going to be important to remember those fields. These are the ones that are on the pivot table. This is the name of those pivot fields as you see. So it's nothing in the back end or hidden. It's just year and month. And now what we do is to figure out if we want it expanded or not. So do we want it like this or this? And we use the show detail property for that. So we reference our field, pivot field year, and then show detail and yes or no. Yes, let's show the detail for the year. And how about the month? Show, not all items, show detail equals true. So expand the year and expand the month. And now, there we go. So we can choose another option or choose this guy. And that is all there is to it. 
<laughs> it is a lot of things to pay attention to. It almost seems like after you finish getting all the stuff out here done, that the coding is maybe the easiest part. But it involves a lot of very particular pieces of information that you have to know about the slicer cache and the pivot cache and the pivot tables and the slicers and the timelines and how they all work together. So if you are a bit confused, that's okay. <laughs> Now, let me show you what you have to change for the other two. All that we have to change is what we're going to do for the date and if you want to show the year or the month. So if we go down for show last year, what we do for the date serial there is current year minus one, then the first day of the year, and 1231. So very easy to get those date periods. And at the end, we want to show the detail for the year but we do not want to show the detail for the month, so we don't want to see the individual days. So that's false. For this year, for the date serial, the current year, 1-1, one, one, and we use today's date, just the date function. And down here, show detail for the year, but nothing for the month. And you may notice I used named arguments here just to make the code easier to read. I didn't do that in the macro that I wrote out. It doesn't matter if you use these or not. This is still the same as what we did in the first macro, just written a slightly different way. And uh, that is all that there is for this guy. Go ahead and use the skills that you have now to make all sorts of fun and interesting custom periods for your buttons here. I think that combining this with slicers makes it really easy to slice and dice your data in a way that's much more friendly than using the regular timeline slicer. Now, if you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you can get all of my future tutorials. And have a wonderful week.